Today's episode of Ham Radio 2.0 is brought to you by Gifts for Hams. Find their website at www.gifts4hams.com. Get your call sign or club logo engraved on virtually anything you want. Specializing in ham radio related gift ideas, Gifts for Hams is your one stop shop for lighted call sign displays, coffee mugs, coasters, drinking glasses, smartphone cases, and so much, much more. Laser engraving and etching to show off your ham radio call sign or club. Shop gifts4hams.com and tell them that Ham Radio 2.0 sent you. Hey guys, this is Jason, Ham Radio 2.0. I want to tell you about the Green Country Ham Fest in Oklahoma coming up uh, first part of April. It is uh, the largest ham fest in the state of Oklahoma. Uh, it's takes place in a town called Claremore, which is just outside of Tulsa. And um, it's one that I've attended several times in the past. Um, usually, I usually have a vendor table there. But, uh, but this year, I'm going to be doing a little bit differently. I'm going to set up Ham Radio 2.0 for the first time, the first time at this ham fest. Um, so I'm going to set up a vendor table or a, a, a booth to do recordings of my videos for people who walk by. I'm going to do interviews from the ham fest folks there. And uh, I'll do some walk-around interviews um, from some of the vendors there as well. But the Green Country Ham Fest is a great ham fest to check out uh, if you've never been there before. Um, come by, check out all the great vendors they've got. Check out the 32,000 square foot indoor facility, which is a big basketball arena is what it is. Okay, so you've got, and they've, they're going to have about 300 flea market tables. And um, they're going to have some really great prizes. The the, the dates of the actual ham fest are April 7th to 8th, so that's fr- it's Friday from 4 to 9, and it's Saturday from 8 to 3. Okay, if you buy tickets at the door, you buy tickets in advance for $8 and buy tickets at the door for $10, and that ticket gets you in for both days. So you don't have to worry about buying a separate ticket or if you can only go one day. It's the same price the whole time, uh, which is really cool. Um, so uh, it goes from 4 to 9 on Friday and 8 to 3 on Saturday. And uh, come by and at least put your name in the hat for a chance to win an Elecraft K3S. This is a really sweet rig. Uh, it's one that I've been looking at for a while. I haven't purchased one. Um, be really cool if I won this one, uh, but uh, we'll see what happens. Uh, but at least you want to come by and put your name in the hat for the Elecraft radio because uh, that is one great, great rig. Uh, a lot of the people you hear on the air, a lot of people, if you ever read about D-Expeditions and QST, um, most of those guys, at least one of those guys, if not most of them, have Elecraft K3S in the in their pool. Uh, other prizes include a Yezu FTDX 3000D, a KX3 as the second prize, and an 857D as the third prize. Um, they're going to have a lot of different forums, uh, some of which I'll be recording. Um, so, you might see me, if you don't see me at my table, you might see me recording a forum. Uh, they're going to have some forums on Digital Voice. Uh, they're going to have an AMSAT forum, an Aries forum, that kind of thing. So, you want to stop by any, any type of that amateur radio type of activity that you want to hear about in the state of Oklahoma. That'll be a good time to do it right there. Once again, admission is only $10 at the door. You can order in advance or you can just come and buy a ticket at the door. Children under 12 will be admitted free, and it is a full two-day. It's kind of like a day and a half, really. It's only 4 to 9 on Friday, but, you know, that, that's to accommodate for people working on Friday. So come by Friday after work, check out all the cool stuff, come back on Saturday for no additional charge. You can find more detailed information on their website at www.greencountryhamfest.org. Um... So go out there, look at all the forums that are going, Look at, uh, take a look at the grand prizes and the, uh, the first, second, and third prizes, and um, just uh, check out all the festivities. I hope to see you at the Ham Fest this year. Again, I'll have my table against one of the walls, and I'll be doing recorded sessions from uh, uh, vendors and just patrons and every, everybody who's uh, got an interest in uh, the ham fest or got an Im- interest in amateur radio in general 73 guys and i hope to see you in april ham radio 2.0 episode something into the future not real sure yet this was a last minute 
presentation that I got wind of, put on by the Dallas Amateur Radio Club out here at uh, one of the local parks in the city. They decided to come outside today and set up Arden mesh nodes and connect them to each other and just kind of do a demonstration for people who had questions and whatnot. So it was very informal. I might have someone talk here in a second and kind of do a very small presentation, but basically today I'm just getting pictures of mesh nodes and how they see each other and what they look like and this kind of thing. So stay tuned and uh, we'll get you some demonstrations on how the mesh, mesh networking wor works uh, using the Arden firmware. I did a presentation, one of my episodes, well I didn't do the presentation, I recorded a presentation at Hamcom in 2016 put on by the Arden guys who actually came up with the firmware and um, that was very good and I got a lot of uh, good feedback on that and uh, uh, also did uh, another episode a month or two later about the how to set up a nano station, a ubiquity nano station with uh, Arden firmware and I've gotten a lot of good response from that and I've gotten more questions about you know show us how to do this, show it what it looks like when the, when the station's together and this kind of thing so this is what we're going to look at today this is a live presentation They've got, there's two nodes on this pole behind me. The one on the top is a nano station and the one on the bottom is a Pico station. And the one on the nano station is pointed this way. It's a 120 degree sector antenna. The one on the bottom, I'll zoom in a little bit here. The one on the bottom is a uh, pointed the other direction. So you can see these nodes here. There's two more nodes on a pole behind me and a second pole with two nodes, and a third pole with two nodes, and a fourth pole with one node, and there's a node on a guy's truck over there across the parking lot. So, uh, we've got several set up here, so we're fixing to look at the computer screen, see what it all looks like. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Paul, KA5TYW, Kilo Alpha 5, Tango Yankee Whiskey. Welcome to an Arden in the Park, hosted by the North Texas Arden Group. We are located currently in Custer Park in Richardson, Texas at the Pavilion and I'm going to describe my Arden Portable Deployment Node. I've made a homemade PVC telescoping mast. I have a Ubiquity Nanostation Loco and a nano, Ubiquity Nanostation at the top. Ethernet cables come down and are connected to each other through a passive PoE device. Power to both radios is provided by an 18 amp hour, 12 volt, 18 amp hour AGM battery. Okay. This node is capable of being operated remotely that is without an Ethernet cable from my laptop computer to this node. By doing so, it allows me to operate from inside a pavilion, inside a car in foul weather, uh, or for convenience. And the way it works is, is the nanostation loco radio is not flashed with Arden firmware. It remains a ubiquity standard uh, Wi-Fi device with part 15 software. The nano station at the top is flashed with Arden firmware. The way it works is any Wi-Fi capable device such as a tablet or a smartphone that's Wi-Fi capable can communicate through the nano station loco, the part 15 radio, through and into the Arden mesh. This is the North Texas Arden Group's version 1.1 portable deployment node. Today our focus at this gathering at this Arden in the Park is to get everyone downloaded, configured, and tested for using Grandstream Wave voice over internet. We have two services that are now available over the Arden mesh. One is using a software that's loaded into the Arden Radio called Mesh Chat. 
That software provides for text messaging and file transfers. The Grandstream Wave software that's loaded on our smartphones will allow us to have voice over internet protocol over the mesh. That is, you can make phone calls over the mesh. The emphasis here is that the Arden mesh, Arden stands for Amateur Radio Emergency Data Network. What we're trying to do here is, a, is establish, essentially, a ham radio internet. So that's a brief description of the Arden node that I'm using, version 1.1, and a description of what we're doing here in our Arden in the Park. Thank you. Okay, as Paul just explained, this is the reason there's two mesh or two uh, Wi-Fi radios on this tower and on three or four of the other towers out here is because one of them is actually just a straight part 15, which is part a part 15 router is what you go to the store and buy. You get on Amazon, you go to Walmart, and you buy a router for your home network, Wi-Fi router, come home, plug it in, put in your password, set it up change the name on it, whatever, and you connect to it with all your devices from your home, like your laptop and your tablets and everything. That's, cons that's called a Part 15 router. It uses the public Wi-Fi band, 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi band. So this one that we're looking at right now is a stock router. Uh, it has not had the mesh or the uh, Arden mesh firmware loaded onto it. It's got the stock Ubiquiti firmware. And it's got a broadcast, it's got an SSID broadcasting so that people can connect to it from their laptops or tablets or smartphones with a regular Wi-Fi connection. And then from there it's hardlined into the mesh router because you can't connect to a mesh router from a regular laptop because they're on different channels. So you can... Uh, get around that by doing this setup and then you can use your regular laptop and then you can connect to your your mesh node wirelessly instead of connecting via a wired connection so that's a really neat way to get that done ingenious idea we've downloaded an app from the Android store and it's on iPhone as well called GS wave which is for grandstand, not grandstand. If you, if you go into the store and type GS Wave, it's like grand something wave. But this app allows you to connect to Grand Stream Wave. That's it. Grand Stream Wave is the application and they have an account set up on the mesh network that will allow you to connect to the mesh through this account using VOIP and be able to use your smartphone to talk VOIP over the mesh network. So you can use a smartphone that doesn't even have a SIM card, doesn't even have service in it, and it will work um, assuming that you've got the Grand Stream Wave uh, application installed and an account set up with a, with a registered account on their network or on your own network. And then set up everyone's account and then you can use your smartphone. So you don't have to have a, a hard, hard line VOIP phone with an asterisk server plugged into your mesh network to use VOIP over the mesh. You can use your smartphone. Really cool idea.